Hey guys, are you tired of plugging in your phone each time you need to run ADB commands on your Android? Well, in this video, I'll show you how to use wireless ADB for new and older Android devices. But before we get started, make sure you have ADB working on your computer. So if you're not sure on how to get ADB set up, check out my video on the basics of using ADB. And now, we'll go over two different ways to use wireless ADB. So if you're using Android version 11 or higher, there's a super easy way to do this using pairing. But for older devices, we'll have to use a slightly different approach using commands. So let's start with the easier approach first for newer Androids. For Samsung devices, go to settings, developer options, debugging, and then turn on wireless debugging. For Pixel devices, you'll actually find developer options in settings, system. But regardless of what Android phone you have, you'll see a wireless debugging toggle. Well, at least if you have Android version 11 or higher. So once you turn this on, we're gonna tap allow. And optionally, you can check always allow on this network to skip this the next time for your Wi-Fi network. And once the toggle is enabled, just tap wireless debugging. And you'll see an option to pair device with pairing code. Perfect. Now we'll switch to our computer and then start an ADB connection. Just go to any folder on your computer and then run CMD to start a command prompt session. Or if it's easier, you can just open it from your start menu. Let's run ADB pair and then type in the full IP address and port number that your Android displays for pairing. When you hit enter, it'll ask you for the pairing code. We already have that. Our Android gives us this right above the IP address and port. Congratulations, because your PC should now be successfully paired with your Android. And you'll see your computer showing up in the list of paired devices to confirm this. Let's run the command ADB devices and you'll see the device showing up there. And now for those of you that have devices that are older than Android 11. so you're not gonna be seeing a wireless debugging toggle in developer options. And that's completely fine because there's another way we can get you connected to ADB wirelessly. First, we temporarily have to connect our Android to our computer using a USB cable. And after that, we'll follow the standard procedure to allow USB debugging from developer options. Don't forget to allow USB debugging by tapping allow on your phone. Bonus points if you check always allow. And now let's go back to our computer and start up a command prompt session somewhere on your PC. First, let's confirm that you can see your device using the ADB devices command. Awesome. Now we're gonna be running ADB kill dash server to kill the server so we can reconnect using the network. And then after that, we need to run ADB TCP IP 5555. This is telling your Android to start listening for incoming connections on this port. And now before we run the very last command, we'll need to get our Android device's IP address. And depending on your model, we'll need to get to your Wi-Fi settings. So on the network you're connected to, look for its IP address, which typically starts with 192.168. And finally, the most important command is to actually connect. And this is done by running ADB connect, followed by the IP address colon 5555, which is basically the port that we gave it earlier. And if everything worked successfully, Congratulations, because you'll get a connection confirmation. You can now disconnect your USB cable from your phone to your computer. To confirm, you can always run ADB devices. And of course, you'll see your device listed by its IP address and the port number. By the way, if you hate manually running each of these commands every time, don't worry, because I've already created a script to do this for you. 
just look in the video description for a link to this script and download it somewhere on your PC. And then after that, go to the folder where you placed it, right click the file and make sure you unblock it. To run this script, just start a command prompt session on that folder and then run adb-connect your Android's IP address. So this basically runs all of those commands for you and then boom, you're connected in just seconds. So after this, you can disconnect your USB cable, run ADB devices, and you'll be able to verify that you're connected wirelessly. So there's a lot that you can do with ADB in general. For example, assuming your Android is connected, let's run ADB shell. So this is kind of like a terminal or command prompt session, but for your Android device. So if I run the ls command, it returns all the folders at the root of the Android file system. Let's type in cd sd card and then ls again. So these are the same folders that you'd see using your files app, like your download folder, for example. Next, we'll use cd download to step inside that directory and then ls again to see all the files listed out for you. So if I wanted to download this picture from my phone to my PC, let's first exit out of this shell session. And now I'll run adb pull to pull the file from my Android, followed by the full path of where the file I want is located. And in this case, you can see how the entire path matches up here. And once it's copied, I can see the file in this folder on my PC but ADB is typically used for more than just transferring files. So for example, to get a full list of all the apps that are installed on your Android device, you can run ADB shell PM list packages. And this is pretty much the same list that you'd see if you went into settings and then apps on your Android. And finally to disconnect or kill your wireless ADB connections. So if you connected using ADB pairing, just pull down your notifications bar, then easily kill the ADB connection by tapping it and then turning off the wireless debugging toggle. And for those of you that connected using the TCP IP approach, it's super simple. Just run ADB disconnect and then confirm that it indeed disconnected everything. So now you have one less reason to use a USB cable when trying to run ADB commands on your Android. And by the way, I'll be doing more videos on different ways to use ADB commands in the future. Thanks for watching. And for more on Android or ADB, please consider subscribing to this channel.